Hi, and welcome to my channel, Learning Biology with Dr. Vanessa, where I take difficult biological concepts and make them easy to understand. As we continue our study of how the human body is organized, we arrive at the tissue level of organization. We know that cells make up tissues. Tissues are groups of similar cells working together to carry out specific, specialized tasks. And when different types of tissues come together, they form organs. In this video, we're gonna lay the groundwork for histology, which is the study of tissues. We'll take a closer look at the four primary tissue types that make up the human body and the specialized cell junctions that hold cells together and allow them to communicate and coordinate. Each type of tissue has its own important job. The structure of a tissue, how it is made up, will influence its function. Some tissues may be hard, semi-solid, or even liquid. The cells in some tissues may be close together or spread more loosely. The cells in a tissue can even differ. As we go through each type, you'll see how form and function are closely linked and how all these tissues work together to keep your body running as a single coordinated system. The tissues of the body are divided into four major types of tissues. The first type are epithelial tissues. Epithelial tissue covers body surfaces, lines hollow organs and body cavities, and forms glands. It plays a role in protection, absorption, secretion, and sensation. The cells in epithelial tissue are tightly packed with minimal extracellular space between them, forming a strong barrier that controls what enters and leaves the body or an organ. The next type of tissue is connective tissue. Connective tissue provides support, structure, and connection throughout the body. Unlike epithelial tissue, it has fewer cells and more extracellular matrix, which includes fibers like collagen and ground substance. It also stores energy, adipose tissue, provides immune defense that we see in lymphatic tissue, and transports substances as we see in the blood. Muscle tissue is made up of cells specialized for contraction. These cells are electrically excitable, allowing them to generate force for movement. Muscle tissue helps us move, maintain posture, and produce heat. There are three types of muscle tissue. Skeletal muscle, which is attached to bones and responsible for voluntary movements. Cardiac muscle, which is found only in the heart, an involuntary muscle that contracts to pump blood. And smooth muscle, which is also involuntary and found in the walls of organs like the intestines and blood vessels. And then we have nervous tissue. Nervous tissue is designed for communication. It consists of neurons which transmit electrical signals and glial cells which support, nourish, and protect the neurons. This tissue forms the brain, spinal cord, and nerves, and it's essential for sensing stimuli, processing information, and coordinating responses. Together, these four tissue types combine in various ways to form every structure in the body, from simple membranes to complex organs. To build a functional tissue, cells must not only exist side by side, they must communicate, adhere, and coordinate their activities. That's where cell junctions come in. These specialized structures link cells physically and functionally, and they are especially important in tissues where cells must maintain tight control over what enters, exits, and moves between them. Let's look at the five major types of cell junctions, each with a unique role. Tight junctions form impermeable seals between neighboring cells, usually near the apical or top surface of those epithelial cells. They're made of web-like strands of transmembrane proteins that bind the cells closely together. Their main job is to block the movement of substances between cells 
essentially forcing materials to go through the cells rather than between them. Since cells are semi-permeable, this limits what can get to the other side. A great example is in the lining of your intestines. Tight junctions there help prevent digestive enzymes, toxins, and harmful microbes from slipping between the cells and reaching deeper tissues. Adhering junctions are strong, mechanical connections that hold adjacent cells together. They use cadherin proteins, a type of cell adhesion molecule, that anchor them into the actin filaments of the cell cytoskeleton. You can think of them like sturdy belt straps wrapping around the cell, keeping neighboring cells tightly connected. These junctions are especially important in epithelial tissues that need to stay intact during stretching or movement, like the lining of your intestines. They help maintain tissue stability and allow cells to respond together to mechanical stress. Desmosomes are spot-like junctions that act like rivets or button snaps, anchoring adjacent cells together at specific points. Unlike adherence junctions, which connect to actin filaments, Desmosomes use transmembrane glycoproteins called cadherins to attach to intermediate filaments such as keratin within the cell's cytoskeleton. This structural link gives tissues tensile strength, helping them resist being torn or stretched. You'll find desmosomes in tissues that experience a lot of mechanical stress, like the epidermis of the skin and cardiac muscle. Their role is to keep cells from pulling apart when the tissue is under pressure, like during a heartbeat or skin movement. Hemidesmosomes get their name because they look like half of a desmosome, but they serve a different function. Instead of linking two adjacent cells together, hemidesmosomes anchor a cell to the basement membrane. The basement membrane is a specialized structure that underlies and supports epithelial tissues. The transmembrane glycoproteins here are integrins, not cadherins like we see in desmosomes. On the inside of the cell, those integrins connect to intermediate filaments made of keratin. On the outside, they bind to laminin, a protein found in the basement membrane. This strong attachment helps stabilize tissues, especially in areas like the skin where cells must stay firmly connected to the underlying layers despite friction or mechanical stress. Gap junctions form protein channels or connexons that allow direct communication between adjacent cells. They permit the direct passage of ions, nutrients, and signaling molecules from one cell to the other. This type of cell-to-cell -cell communication is critical in tissues that require coordinated activity. For example, in the heart, gap junctions allow electrical impulses to spread quickly from one muscle cell to the next, ensuring that the heart beats in a synchronized, rhythmic fashion. Without them, efficient pumping of blood would be impossible. Tissues are more than cellular groupings. They are organized, cooperative networks that form the foundation of every organ and system in your body. And without cell junctions, these tissues would fall apart, literally and functionally. Together, they maintain the structure and harmony needed for life. Understanding tissues and cell junctions gives you a window into how the body is built and how it stays together on both a physical and cellular level. If this video was helpful, make sure to give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're enjoying this clear, easy to understand approach to learning biology, make sure to subscribe to this channel and click on the notifications so that you never miss out on new content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.